Welcome back, number three. So, how did you get along with the nose breathing? Did you catch yourself breathing through your mouth? Was it difficult to breathe through your nose? Did you notice that one side of your nose worked better than the other? All of these things can be true. These are simply observations. These are simply things that we need to integrate into our consciousness so that we are then able to work with them. They're like buying a new paint color for your paint box, okay? So now we're going to look at some of the musculature of breathing. And this is where it gets really interesting to me. Now, if you go to the doctor and the doctor, you know, as a little kid, maybe the doctor put a stethoscope in the center of your chest and said, breathe, and you went. You might be forgiving for imagining that um, your breath is primarily circulating in this part of your body. And in fact, well, yes, your bronchioles are here. And yes, it is very interesting for a doctor to listen to the sounds in there. Um, by the same token, if you were to say to, uh, you know, any child or even an adult, take a really big breath, most people go like this. And they'll lift up their chest, you know, like holding a balloon here at the front. We think that the breath inhabits this area of the body. So what are the muscles of this area of the body? Well, we've got, of course, the pectoral muscle. We have the trapezius. We have the sternocleidomastoid. All of these muscles can participate in breathing. Um, but these are called accessory muscles of breathing. So accessory muscles are secondary muscles of breathing. And they can be engaged as and when. So if you have to run away from a tiger or I'm a Canadian, a bear, um, yeah, you, you want to be able to move that chest. That's for sure. But in your day-to-day -day life, that's not what you want to be using to breathe. It's as simple as that. So we've already mentioned this wonderful muscle called the diaphragm. The diaphragm is more or less at this level and it has a couple of little arms that come down here. Interestingly enough, there's a ligament that attaches the diaphragm to the large intestine. Okay. And the diaphragm, uh, as I said, sits here and when we breathe in, it moves down, opening up the lung space, allowing air to enter. And when we breathe out, it moves up and the lung space is reduced. And so the air is pushed out. And this is just due to pet pressure differences, okay? But there are other primary muscles of breathing. And these are the ones that most people either don't know about or forget about. These muscles are called the intercostal muscles, and they are the muscles that are in between the ribs. Now, if any of you out there eat meat, if you think about like spare ribs, right? The muscles that are in between the ribs of an animal are very, very similar to the muscles that are between our ribs. And they're actually a double layer. So the external ones, when they contract, they pull the ribs out. And the internal ones, when they contract, they pull the ribs in. And so where these intercostal muscles and the diaphragm more or less overlap is just about in this area of the body, okay? So if we are breathing in a technically correct manner, i.e. using the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm, our breath ceases to move forward and upward and becomes a backward and downward moving force. And if we imagine, for example, a horse that's just run a race and we see it breathing, that horse is not breathing with its chest. It uses its chest for locomotion, it's four-legged. That horse is breathing from its flanks. And so the number one change that we have to start to make when we begin to breathe correctly, apart from the nasal, nasal breathing, is we need to actually visualize the breath in a different way. We need to stop imagining the breath as something that moves upwards and forwards, and we need to see the breath as something that moves downwards and backwards. And so in the next video, I'm going to show you some uh, very specific uh, breathing exercises with uh, little arm movements. These are exercises that I use to great effect and acceptance in my private yoga classes um, so yeah, take a minute now, 
Um, see if you can move your ribs when you breathe. Um, I say to the ladies, stretch your bra strap. That is one thing that just really works for us because we know exactly what's going on there. For the gentlemen, just see if you can, you know, pull out to the side and back and contract back in. So that's the inhale, that's the exhale. Okay, uh, check it out, come back and we'll carry on. Namo.